Hello pretty people, I'm Izzy aka The Quirky Environmentalist and um, welcome to my channel here and on my blog we talk about sustainable living, ethical fashion, environmentalism and well lots of other bits and pieces too and today we're talking about performative allyship and more specifically the performative allyship of brands with regards to the Black Lives Matter movement. Now, I'm sure of you, most of you watching this at home are aware of what's happening right now with Black Lives Matter. The death of George Floyd, the murder of George Floyd, um, coupled with the murder of countless black people through history and the systematic racist society that we live in in this world has caused protests across America and well the rest of the world. And as part of this there came a blackout Tuesday sort of thing, lots of arguments as to whether it was effective, <laughs> but a lot of brands jumped on the bandwagon of Blackout Tuesday and were called on to make their own stand against racism and for Black Lives Matter. Um, and lots of brands have come out and shown their solidarity to Black people and for Black Lives Matter. A lot of this is really just performative because a lot of them have just put up a post that says we stand in solidarity or a black square with hashtag blackout tuesday and well this doesn't do anything let's be real um and countless people have come out and talked about their experiences um black creators black people working in various industries have come out and talked about their own experiences working with brands who have come out in solidarity and there are so, so many brands who have come out who have been upholding a um, white supremacy system within their own companies and we're going to talk about that today. Now there are so, so many brands that I could talk about today. So we're focusing on three main brands and what they've done and why that is performative and doesn't help anyone and we will also then be talking about a load of brands. Um, just little bits here and there and the system as a whole and how you can spot performative allyship and how brands can do better and of course this doesn't just apply for brands it applies to influencers um, and individuals as well but we are focusing on brands who have a lot of power and are being really really performative right now and aren't actually doing anything good so um yeah let's get into it also if you see me looking like down here a lot it's because i've got my notes here and there are a lot of brands and a lot of names and i want to make sure that i am not getting anything wrong here first of all we're going to talk about l'oreal when this first started kicking off um with the protests and a lot of the online activism l'oreal put up a post that said speaking out is worth it you will understand the irony of this specific statement in just a minute. And then on the Blackout Tuesday date, they posted a black square with hashtag Blackout Tuesday. They didn't say in either of those posts how they were going to be making a tangible difference to their own business. They didn't say how much they were donating. It was really just, we stand with you in solidarity. So pretty empty to start with not good. Their history, it's even worse. In 2017, Monroe Burdoff was hired to be part of a L'Oreal campaign and during this time she used her own platform speaking as a black woman to talk out against racism and white supremacy. L'Oreal's reaction to this was to remove her from the campaign and essentially leave her on her own to deal with the media who well they left her to the wolves essentially and since 2017 they have done nothing there's been no apology no compensation nothing for monroe and she has used her platform and many others have used their platform right now to talk about how just how performative l'oreal are being they're saying speaking up is worth it right now when it's popular when you're going to lose money and it's bad pr not to speak out but it definitely was not worth it when monroe spoke out in 2017 and you fired her from your campaign this is performative allyship loads and loads of people have been commenting on l'oreal's post saying where is the apology 
where is the compensation for Monroe for what you put her through for speaking out when now that it's trendy, now that it's the thing to do, you are speaking out? They've just ignored everyone's calls for them to do better and think that just a statement saying speaking out is worth it, that doesn't do anything, that doesn't make any change, that doesn't make up for what you did against someone who is speaking out against racism. They're not recognising the part that they have to play in right supremacy and in racism and the ways that they could actually change things. No, Black Square is enough, apparently. It's not. It wasn't the only time they'd done this either. Um, a few months after this happened, Amina Khan had her tweets from 2014 dredged up where she talked about the Israeli occupation of Palestine and she, from pressure, removed herself from L'Oreal's campaign. So they have a history of not letting people speak out, and yet now, when it's going to damage their PR, if they don't, they're the ones speaking out whilst not actually doing anything. So just before I was about to upload this video, Moreau tweeted to say that she's spoken to L'Oreal and that they are donating £25,000 each to Mermaids and to UK Black Pride and that she is now working with them on their Equality and Diversity Committee to take steps forward in their business. So campaigning does work and yeah, it's good to see that they're trying to move forward. Moving on from L'Oreal, um, I'm going to talk about In The Style. I could make an entire video, and I probably will, about In The Style and all of the things that have happened with them in the last year with the sustainability community and with this, but we are just going to talk about their reaction to Black Lives Matter. Um, there is a lot in just a few days that happened. <laughs> the only thing that's really left on In The Style social media page is their Blackout Tuesday post, which was just a black square. Um, and I can't remember the exact timeline as whether they posted something before this or whether they posted the t-shirt thing before this. Basically, um, they didn't say very much and then they went ahead and posted a charity t-shirt which was this one and said 100% of the profits are going to Black Lives Matter. Um, <laughs> this got a lot of backlash for several reasons. First of all, um, they're trying to directly profit off this. Okay, 100% of the profits from this t-shirt are going to Black Lives Matter, but they are hoping that you're going to go onto their website and buy a load of things as well. Second of all, their first reaction to this was to sell a t-shirt and try and sell stuff. In the style are not transparent about their supply chains and fashion is inherently exploitative of marginalised people. You don't get to exploit one group of marginalised people to try and help another. That is not okay. Just no. Thirdly, um, apparently their design that they used, although they claim that it's just popular, um, was stolen off another artist for their t-shirt. They could just be donating money directly to these charities and getting their consumers to direct donate directly to these charities rather than buying a charity t-shirt in the process. Anyway, they got an awful lot of backlash on this post and on pretty much all of their posts. Um, about the fact that this was a really bad idea and they shouldn't have done it. So they first muted the post and said that it was muted for Blackout Tuesday when in reality we all know it was muted because they were getting backlash. Then they deleted the post and then they came up, I believe it was a couple of days later, with a statement. They came up with a very long statement which I'm gonna have to have my laptop on my lap for because the text is really small. I'll put it up so you can read the whole thing. Pause if you want to read the whole thing, but we're gonna... yeah. They're addressing the concerns, they're talking about how they're outraged and the world was outraged by the killing of George Floyd um, and wanted to react to a call for them to be anti-racist so that their response to this was a t-shirt to donate money. We wanted, as a business, we wanted to support the George Floyd Memorial Fund. We commissioned and produced a t-shirt they managed to commission and produce a t-shirt in like two days, which, yeah, definitely not an eth you can't do that ethically or sustainably. <laughs> anyway, yesterday it sold out, so apparently that's why they removed the post, because it was sold out. They didn't remove the t-shirt post because it got backlash. Um, Batch and raised over £10,000 in a few hours. We have pledged that In The Style will double the final donation amount already, taking this to £20,000. 
And then they said, a lot of people have embraced it, there are also people who have criticised it, and they want people to speak off, and that they turned off commenting in respect to Blackout Tuesday, and that they agree that they can do more and that they will do more, and that they didn't mean to cause any offence, because that's, that's always a great apology. <laughs> Yeah, let's dissect this a little bit. First of all, they've said that they deleted the post because it sold out, not because of the backlash, and that they turned off the comments for Workout Tuesday, not because of the backlash. They made £10,000 off the t-shirts, which is going to the George Floyd Memorial Fund, and they've added £10,000 to that. £10,000 for a massive fast fashion business is nothing absolutely nothing and they don't address any of the other concerns that people were having about this because there's more if you go onto their page and you scroll back and scroll back and scroll back and scroll back and keep keep scrolling there are no black models on their instagram page at all none they scrambled after this to post like one black model but then it's been a few days and okay they've posted like one more black model Someone said that they'd scrolled back to January to find the last time that In The Style used a black model. Put your money where your mouth is and do some actual work. So that's one issue with this. Second of all, they've deleted any sort of thing that would have caused backlash when what they should be doing, if they are actually committed to anti-racism work, is saying we recognise where we've made a mistake and we don't want to hide it and we're going to do more. There's absolutely no evidence that they've done more. Someone also tweeted their CEO on Instagram to ask him where their black staff members were. They'd looked and they'd found the pictures of all their staff, I guess, on LinkedIn and they'd put a screenshot up of all those photos and sent it to their CEO. His reaction, and he does this a lot, he tends to try and gaslight people and make it you've done something wrong when you call him or his company out for doing something and he turned around and he was like how dare you post the photos of my staff members on social media when these photos were all public they were all on LinkedIn second of all oh we do have black staff members they're just like not on LinkedIn post a video them post about how diverse your company is um yeah he has a history of saying I'm sorry if you were offended but this with in the style was a lot of a mess um, and I probably missed bits here and there of what they've done um, but don't support them not only because <laughs> they are an unethical business and a sustainable business but they don't actually care about anti-racism that's clear they're not actually doing the work and when people try and call them out they just call them haters and say that they're the problem, not the company. And um, because I was involved in a conversation talking about this online, I have now been blocked from their Twitter. Yay! Thirdly, on the brands that we're going to take a bit more of a deep dive into, we have Reformation. Now, I chose Reformation out of all of the brands that I've been seeing getting backlash and black people themselves coming out and saying that they've had issues with companies because they are a sustainable and ethical, ethical brand. And I want you to know that just because a brand is sustainable and supposedly ethical in its manufacturing processes does not mean that it is absolved of racism. This information with regards to Reformation comes from Elle Santiago. She posted on her Instagram about her experience in working for Reformation for three years and what she went under as a black woman working for Reformation for those three years. Um, there are quite a lot of slides. I'm not going to read everything out bit by bit. Um, I'll put screenshots up and also a link to the Instagram post in the description if you want to read it all in detail. But I'm going to sum up basically the issues here and um, yeah, why Reformation are a racist company who need to do a lot better. So she worked there up until 2016 as an assistant manager and in her short time there was consistently overlooked for promotions despite being doing a lot of the work for um, store manager herself and she was already doing the work, she was already doing a lot of work for the company despite this consistently overlooked for promotions and instead was used to train 
new white women coming into the company or people who had been brought in from outside to be promoted above her. She would also have to speak through white women to get the founder Yael to listen to anything she said. She said that when Yael first met her she looked her up and down in disgust and even if they were in the same room together Yael wouldn't acknowledge her when she talked to her. So she would have to speak through other staff members um, and white women to get Yael to listen to anything that she was saying. Then when black models were brought in and they were looking to hire them to model for reformation that they were told that reformation wasn't ready for that yet um, and that there were no black models, no plus size models working for reformation in the early days and that they saw no need to bring those sorts of people in either. And that during Black History Month when she first arrived and this was a scandal at the time the founder, Yael, and another member of the team posted themselves eating fried chicken uh, with the hashtag Black History Month and that was their post for Black History Month. She opened up about this on her Instagram and after that Reformation messaged her to ask her about her experience over the phone. They were not asking, they were not offering to pay her for this time. Um, and for the labour that she was giving them and that she also told them all of these issues in her exit interview in 2016 which had obviously been ignored until now, until they were brought to the surface and um, that they now have to do this anti-racist work otherwise it's bad PR. This is a brand that has over 1.6 million followers on Instagram and the only thing that they could post for Black Lives Matter um, was if you want to help fight for justice right now here are a few organisations we recommend supporting we'll be donating to organisations above hashtag door slide hashtag black lives matter and they have a few charities since I recorded this video Yael the founder herself has come onto Reformation's Instagram page and posted a very long winded apology about how she hasn't done enough for black people and also black indigenous and other people of colour and that they've been working through the white gaze. Um, I'll put it up for you and that she's donating $500,000 personally. Now as a white person it is not my place to accept or not accept this apology but it definitely seems very empty. It seems very much like she's only apologising because she's been shamed publicly and she's still centering herself in this. People are saying it's too little too late and the actions speak a lot louder than words and I personally, I've never bought anything from them before but I have promoted them on my website and I will be removing them from any promotions on my website and will not be promoting them again. Um, so yeah, sustainable brands aren't innocent either, just because a brand's sustainable does not mean that they're also not racist. And I've seen quite a lot of sustainable brands who, and this isn't necessarily case in Reformation's case, they just, yeah. but a lot of um, sustainable brands seem to have this white saviour complex and if all of their models are white and you only ever see their clothing on white people yet they're showing loads of pictures of women of colour and of black women being like these are the people that work in our factories we help them like, make their lives better then that's inherently white saviour and racist as well just <laughs> Just an aside there on something I'd noticed from quite a few sustainable brands. These three brands that I have talked about, there have been countless others who have been called out for their racist policies and the way that they've treated black men and women who have worked for them. There's also countless brands who haven't paid their supply chains during the coronavirus pandemic um, and who have only paid because they were pressured to by campaigns like the hashtag pay up campaign. You don't get to exploit um, one group of marginalised people who are generally women of colour and black women and then stand up for black rights at the same time. Like it doesn't work. It's clear that you're doing this for PR and you're not doing this because you generally give a shit about black lives. But these are brands like Gap Anthropology. Urban Outfitters, Walmart, Gap, Topshop, they haven't paid and the brands who have only been only paid their supply chains because they were pressured to are brands like ASOS, H&M, Nike. You can also see from all of these brands 
empty words. They have all pretty much all just put up one statement, one picture that says we stand in solidarity or donate to some charities and then carried on like normal. It's empty, doesn't do anything, doesn't achieve anything, doesn't make any tangible change. The industry especially was founded and was built on the back of slaves and of slavery and it still continues to rely on the exploitation of marginalised people and in a lot of cases modern day slavery as well and you can't you, you don't just get to stand up and say hey we stand with black people and the anti-racism fairy says you're absorbed of all your like sins you don't get to do that you actually have to put in the work to change the system a few words and a picture on instagram does not change anything you also have brands that constantly appropriate black culture misguided that hire black fishing models pretty little thing fashion nova all coming up with their little statement and then carrying on like normal like they're not complicit in the system then you have brands like trader joe's sending their workers home for wearing a black lives matter mask you have starbucks refusing to let their workers wear black lives matter pins all of these brands are complicit in racism and a white supremacist system <laughs> and by saying they're not letting their staff get political wearing black lives matter pins it's not political they're not letting their staff stand up for human rights stand up for their own rights and that ain't right brands are doing the work and have been doing the work they're not just doing it now because it's good pr or trying to they have been doing the work they will be able to show you that empty words <laughs> are just performative allyship and are only there for pr so do not support brands that do this yes call these brands out ask them how they're going to make tangible change ask them how much they're donating to black charities ask them what the demographic of their workplace is like and how many black people they have in senior management positions and higher up in their company and instead of supporting these brands support the brands who are standing up and doing the anti-racism work support black owned brands indigenous owned brands small businesses who are doing the work and are not exploiting marginalized people here or anywhere in the world also, if you work in a big company, do your own work. Stand up for your black peers and your black staff members if they are experiencing racism. Do the work yourself because we have a huge, and I mean we as in white people, have a huge part to play in making sure we dismantle the system so that it is fairer for black people and for other people of colour. We are the ones who should be changing things and doing the work to change things for the better. Do the reading, learn about systematic racism and how it affects people. Learn how you can make a difference by changing the way that you speak, by standing up for other people. You have a part to play in this as well. And that is it for this video. I hope you've learned something from this. Um, about performative allyship and have learnt some brands and at least how to spot brands who are not actually doing the work um, yeah I hope you enjoyed it give it a like if you liked it you can subscribe for more I know that I said in my last video that this month was going to be all about pride and it was all going to be pride content but things change <laughs> I will be bringing out the content I have planned for Pride at some point but right now this is definitely more important and more pressing and so yeah that's what we're talking about. If there's anything else you'd like to see me talk about um, I would like to know and also feel free to talk about brands in the comments who are also not doing their part and are being performative and need to do better. Thank you so much for watching, I will see you very soon. Keep fighting racism!